Hey guys, today's an exciting day in the workshop. We have a new printer. So we have been working and printing on these uh, printers for a while and they have long Bowden tubes. And for you guys building those airplanes, you know that there's a ton of retraction settings with uh, building these airplanes and it's just a pain to get all that stuff adjusted. So I think the answer to that is gonna be a direct drive printer. So I have my first direct drive printer. Uh, this is Artillery Sidewinder. Uh, the artillery has a couple printers. This is their larger printer and they have a smaller printer also that is also direct drive. So I'm hoping that this direct drive printer is going to be answered having a really good quality print on these airplane parts. And the best thing is it's affordable. I'm going to unbox this, throw some prints on there, and then I'm going to give you guys a full review on what this is. I'm going to print an airplane out and I'm going to show you guys how it actually works for printing out airplane parts. Okay, so check this out. This printer is really easy to set up. There's basically just two parts to it. There's the rack and the base unit. So you just need to secure the two parts together using the supplied Allen screws. Uh, set up the spool holder on the top and make sure all the cables are connected. Plug it in and then just level the bed. And the bed leveling is really easy on this printer. Uh, it has really easy access screws to get to to level the bed. Uh, it comes with a supplied USB drive to transfer the STL files over uh, where you can plug it in directly to your computer also. I really like the touch screen display on this uh, printer. It's very responsive and very clear colors. It's really easy to access. Some of them are kind of like an older style touch screen. This, one, this touch screen is really uh, sensitive and really works very well. Okay, now that we have our new printer set up, we can throw on some PLA, throw some STL files in there, and 47 hours later of continuous printing, we will have one of these, a nicely completed uh, fuselage to my next build. But wait, before we can uh, 3D print all these parts out, we have a couple things we need to figure out on our new printer. The first thing that we need to figure out is the flow settings. So in printing thin wall, it's very important to make sure that when you're printing line width 0.4 that you're actually going to get 0.4 millimeter line width and that is involved in the flow settings so in some of my printers i have to turn up my flow settings up to like 115 almost 120 percent flow to get a 0.4 millimeter line width and that depends usually on the speed that i'm printing at or just the printer in general so for this printer the first thing that i'm going to print on this is a flow test and what that is is just a square box I set my cure settings to continuous spiral mode and then I'm going to print one layer thickness on the wall and do a continuous print in a, in a square shape and then once I get the print I'll get a, just a little square like this and I'll take a caliper and use the caliper on the edge and verify that I have 0 0.40 millimeters wall thickness. So now that we have that I have verified that I can print at 100% flow rate and I can get a 0.4 millimeter wall thickness. Now I know I can leave my flow settings at 100% for this printer. Now the next thing that we need to do is a retraction test. Now if you're going to print your normal uh, pieces out, like you know, if you're not printing airplane parts out, then you can probably leave all your stock settings alone and get pretty good quality prints with this printer. But if you guys know out there that are printing airplanes that there's a lot more settings that need to be adjusted uh, before you can start printing out all your airplane parts. So that way you can get the right weights and the printer comes out really nice quality. So the next thing we gotta do is a retraction test. So the first thing I did was I just put on this retraction test and I used the stock settings. The stock settings were two millimeter retraction, zero prime, at 40 millimeters per second. This can be improved a lot. This is with the stock settings and I improved it to this here on the right. And what I ended up coming up with is that the best setup for this was to slow the retraction speed down significantly. So I retract at 10 millimeters per second, which is much slower than I usually retract at. Because it's a direct drive printer, I did a whole bunch of different tests. I sped it up, I slowed it down. Uh, I did different retraction amounts, different prime amounts, and this is what I came up with that works very well. And I've printed out an entire airplane using 1.3 millimeter retraction at 10 millimeters per second with 0.2 of prime. With all the initial settings set up, uh, I started printing out the fuselage for the ASK-14 glider by plain print. 
Uh, these parts came out amazing. This is the best quality print that I have had on any one of my airplanes. Uh, this printer is working very well for this thin wall printing. Uh, there are a couple issues with it that I'll talk about here just later on in this video, uh, but these parts came out awesome. This is going to be my number one printer from now on uh, to be using. Uh, this is uh, just assembling the ASK-14 glider. Uh, if you guys haven't seen uh, my channel before, I build all these 3D printed airplanes, so make sure to you know, subscribe to my channel and check out some of these 3D printed airplanes that I've been building. Once I got the printer, I spent about half a day just setting up the settings, got those flow settings, those retract settings, those are the most important part to getting your thin walls looking good. So once I got that set up, I was able to print off this entire fuselage, and uh, all these wing parts. This is a 2.5 meter glider, the biggest airplane that I've built so far. Uh, over 170 hours just in printing this, and I printed a bunch of other stuff too uh, for other planes just to test out some different materials. All the prints came out perfectly. I had no failed prints as far as retraction or priming settings at all. Uh, the only failed prints I had, uh, I got a fuselage part that failed and a couple wing parts that failed. Uh, and they were caused from bed adhesion problems. Uh, I've printed out a whole bunch of different materials with this printer. Uh, just with this airplane alone, I have PEG clear here. Uh, I've got, this is uh, PLA on the fuselage. I have PETG white for the wing. I have lightweight PLA for the tail. I have uh, regular TPU for the tires. And I've also printed out some uh, Barisher TPU from Colorfab for the Savage Bobber, the smaller bobber that Plain Print has. I printed out the tires for that just to test out that, uh, that material. I printed out a whole bunch of materials and it's been working really well, uh, but there are a couple things I want to cover with you guys. So first thing is the bed adhesion. So, you know, it's pretty common glass bed, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there for, you know, why, how to fix glass beds or make it better adhesion, all that kind of stuff. But us building all these airplane parts and these thin wall stuff, we have an extra challenge to it because we, you know, how big this wing is, how skinny it is, but how limited amount of bed contact. I mean, it has very limited PLA actually touching the bed uh, for adhesion. So that causes an extra challenge. For this printer, I first started off by adding some tape to the bed. I taped the whole bed and I uh, used that for a little while. Uh, and then I ended up using glue sticks, which I didn't really want to use glue sticks because it kind of gets all gunky and you get to clean it up once in a while and stuff. So I didn't really want to use glue sticks, but I did try that for a little while. Uh, and then what ultimately ended up working the best for me was for the uh, wing and the fuselage, I used Overture PLA or PTG. They come with like an Overture bed plate mat like this, uh, and it has a sticky adhesive on the back so you can unstick it, put it on the bed. Uh, and this is 200 uh, millimeters by 200 millimeters, which is the maximum size for any of the parts for all these airplanes that I've built on my channel. Uh, so, you know, these wing parts will fit right on there diagonally. Um, so I ended up putting this on the center of the bed. Uh, and that worked for most of the parts. And then some of the parts I had to actually use a little bit of glue actually on this actual build plate also. Uh, and that helped quite a bit. Uh, but I've had, you know, like the first piece I had was actually like the worst warping I've actually had. It just is very, very warped. And part of it's because it's with PETG, uh, which PETG has problems with warping also. How you can minimize PETG, you're usually printing at like 230 to 250 uh, Celsius. So I printed this at 240. Uh, and then something else I usually do in my uh, printing room here, uh, I usually have the window open because when I have like two or three printers running, it can get pretty warm in here. So I'll have the window open just to kind of let it cool down a little bit. Um, but that's not good to do with PETG because as the film is printing, it's cooling and then it warps it. So I ended up closing the window, keeping it a little bit warmer in the room and that helped a little bit. Also, and then I ended up having to use a brim on a lot of parts, which I usually don't like to use or I don't use them usually. Uh, but I ended up using a brim, that bed plate from Overture, and some glue. So a combination between all three of those, I was able to get all the parts printed out for this uh, airplane that I'm building right now. So one more thing that I didn't really like with this printer was the PLA rack. So with the different filaments and all the different materials that I'm using, they're between different companies or different materials themselves. The roll width is different on all the materials. 
So then you have to take your three millimeter wrench, loosen up half of the rack, slide it to the left or right, and then, you know, tighten it back up. And then along with, you know, heating up your extruder and changing out the filament. So just one extra step that you have to do when you're changing out filaments. So one more thing that you have to be careful with with this printer is because it is a direct drive printer, there's a lot of weight right here on this uh, system here where the extruder's at. So when it's printing, if you have the settings too fast, it will actually create a little bit of a bubble when it comes around the edge of this printer. So as it comes around here and it comes around the front, if you have it set too fast, I got a little bit of bubble right here on this edge. It's like kind of like a rough edge. And you can see it on the elevator of the ASK14 on one side of it. It's a little bit textured on the surface and on the other side it's smooth because I slowed it down after I realized what was going on. For this printer, other than a few problems I had with uh, bed adhesion and some speed with the extruder, uh, really this printer has just been amazing. I've been just printing off all kinds of parts. I've got the next two airplanes that are ready to go and PLA ordered. So as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna be throwing it back up uh, and throwing STL files on it. It's gonna be continuing to print for a very long time. This is gonna be my number one printer to use uh, from now on for all my airplanes. I'm going to have uh, all my settings down in the description below for my Surface Layer 3 for plain print airplanes. Uh, and so you guys can check out the settings that I use. I have another thin wall printing video up on YouTube. I'll throw a link up for that too uh, in the cards here. So you guys can click on that if you guys are having more problems with your thin wall printing. And I go a little bit more in depth in that video about some uh, settings and Kira and everything. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next build where I'll be finishing up this ASK1 Ford glider.